Let's look at the stat key functions that we're going to run into when we're dealing with uh, a difference in two means. We have this example here. It says the juniors and seniors compete to see who has the better average score on state tests. So we're looking for a higher average between uh, juniors and seniors, our two groups. The data is below. That's down here. Is the difference statistically significant? Now the first thing I always want to look at, are we dealing with match pairs? Is there some connection between each piece of data down here and each piece of data up here that links them? And from looking at the list, first of all, there is a different number of uh, values in each list, so it must not be match pairs. That would be not possible with different numbers of things in the list, so that's an immediate clue. But otherwise, we're just talking about a bunch of juniors and a bunch of seniors. So it's probably not the same person twice. It's probably not brother, sister, or somehow connected people. First thing we're looking for is, is the difference between these two statistically significant? So we need to see if there's a difference, how big it is. And uh, the null hypothesis for a situation like that, if we're looking for a difference, is to assume that the averages of each of these lists are equal to each other, that they are the same, there is no difference. So the average of this list of the juniors should be equal to the average of this list, the seniors. So we have mu juniors equals mu seniors. The alternative then is that they are different. This difference is statistically significant, not that juniors is significantly more, uh, for example. So in this case it's just a simple not equals. Now when we want to actually perform this hypothesis test in our calculator, we are going to want to use the test of difference in means. And that's something that you can find in StatKey. So we're looking at randomization tests. We have tests in the difference of means. And that's because we have one categorical, uh, juniors or seniors, and one quantitative uh, variable that we are measuring, the quantitative one being the average or the score on the state test. So we go ahead and click on that and we fill in our data. And you can see here the way the data is set up, it has the group that it's in followed by a comma and then the actual number. So looking at our data here, it would be junior comma 32, junior comma 36, junior comma 35 and each of those pairs would get its own row. My shortcut if you ever have to enter this kind of data by hand is just to use a single letter um, such as J and S. So if I do J comma 32, J comma 36 and so forth for each of the juniors then I will have uh, all of those data points entered and then for all of my seniors, I have a, a 30, a score of 30. So I do S comma 30, S comma 34, um, and so forth with all of my seniors. And so let's get all that data entered. All right, so you can see I've got all of those data values in there. I click OK. And what you'll see on the right side is a couple dot plots. Um, one of those is going to be for uh, the first group, one of them for the second group. So my juniors group and my seniors group. And I can see all of the original data uh, that I typed in here. And I can see the original data uh, down here for the other group. And I can see that the averages are even different. So we have the yellow triangle represents the average over here. Yellow triangle represents the average over here. Now the way that it does a randomization test is it pretends that all of these numbers don't belong to any particular group. It doesn't belong to the juniors, doesn't belong to the seniors. And so if I generate one sample, what it's going to do is it's going to mix those up. So it's going to mix up the J's and S's and randomly reassign them to the different numbers. And by doing so, uh, we should in theory have a difference of zero on average. And sometimes it'll be a little higher because it's random and sometimes it'll be a little bit lower. So this one here we found an average distance somewhere between 0 and 1. You can see the two yellow triangles are pretty close. Do this again. You can see how every time because it's random it does come out a little bit different. And after a couple thousand you can see a very distinct pattern here. Now if we're doing a hypothesis test uh, we always want to look at 
data as extreme uh, or data as high or data as low as the data we found. And as you can see here, we're looking at the difference here. We found a difference as high as 2.23. What's the uh, probability of finding something that extreme? Well, I'm going to go ahead, since we're doing extreme, uh, two directions. I'm going to go with a two-tail, click here, and set that to my 2.23. And now you can see that I have a 0 0.087 probability of getting higher than that, and then the same on the other end. So I'll add those together, basically 0.17 probability of finding data as extreme as I found. And as a result, I'm going to say that my data is not statistically significant. There is not a statistically significant difference between these two groups. And if we go back, it looks like it's juniors versus senior test scores. So there's not a statistically significant difference between the test scores of juniors and the test scores of seniors. Now, taking this problem a little bit farther, uh, besides the fact that we can say, no, there's not, uh, we can figure out what is the, the difference that we would expect to see between juniors and seniors. Because as you recall from the data up here, there was a difference of 2.23 and they had to come from somewhere so let's see if that uh, what the confidence interval around that looks like if it's a very wide confidence interval or something kind of small so we're going to proceed using the same idea the interval um, confidence interval of the difference of means before I leave this page here I'll copy and paste all my data so I don't want to throw any of that away and then go to the confidence interval for a difference in means, right in the middle of the table. Next to the difference in means test, one quantitative, one categorical, and yes, it is a confidence interval, so right in the middle. And when I edit the data and hit Control A, I can delete whatever's in there and paste in this set of numbers. Again, I am trying to set a confidence interval here and so instead of uh, mixing up the two groups like I did before when I generate a sample what's going to happen is it's going to randomly pick so many uh, using resampling from the first group and randomly pick so many using resampling from the second group and resampling is where you can pick the same dot more than once so if I were to repeat that, repeat that many times over, I can see that a typical difference between them is somewhere around 2.2. And that makes sense because that's what I got in my original sample. So I can expect a difference of around 2.2, 2.3. But I can also see how that trails off. So if I want to do a 95% confidence interval, I pop on my two tail here. And my middle 95% is between negative 0.571 and 4.835. So it appears that uh, this first group here has a uh, slight disadvantage in test scores compared to the second group. Going back to our interpretation, that means that our uh, shortlist here with all the 36s, which would be our uh, juniors down here, the juniors have an advantage. So the juniors uh, would be somewhere between negative 0.5 and positive 4.8 uh, points higher on the standardized test.